What's up guys, Coach Steve here. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about food composition, part four of understanding nutrition. So we've gone over our energy balance. We've gone over macronutrients. We've touched on nutritional timing. Now we're here at food composition. Next, we're gonna be talking about how to adjust your diet. And then finally, about nutritional periodization. Let's get onto it. So the first thing that we need to understand is that not all food is made the same. So each food has a mixture of different macronutrients and, of course, different micronutrients. This lecture here is going to be lots of numbers, lots of tables, lots of data. Um, prepare yourself. It's going to be lots of fun. So the first thing we're going to look at protein. So this information is what's found on our nutritional templates at the moment. And this is protein per 100 grams and it's sorted by the most. Now what we can see here at the very top is actually Parmesan cheese. So Parmesan cheese at the very top with 35.1 grams of protein per 100 grams. So that means that if you had 100 grams of Parmesan, and you ate it, you get 35 grams of protein. Now it also comes with other things such as fats, really high fats, no carbohydrate, no fiber. The next in line, we've got things like our uh, beef, grilled grilled beef. We've got things like cheese, che more cheddar, seed, chicken, cheese, beef. So lots of like kind of dairy products at the top, lots of animal products here. Um, and they're not many, uh, if any, um, plant-based products, maybe like peanut butter here, uh, nuts here, quite high. Now, the main takeaway here is that we've got protein, but then we've also got other macronutrients. And the things that are highest in protein can also include other um, macronutrients and really high in calories. So then the next thing we could say is, all right, well, how do we limit this down? Because you know, you're not gonna be having um, 100 grams of palms and cheese and have 400 calories, <laughs> that can be quite high in calories, um, quite energy dense. So the next thing we can look at is protein per 100 grams that are less than 200 calories. And now we've got like our common kind of bodybuilding like foods. And there's, I guess that's the reason why many bodybuilders choose to have things like, you know, grilled chicken, grilled beef, tuna, um, you know, some other seafood products. So lots of um, animal products here. Again, low in calories, high in protein, generally low in fats, and then, you know, some um, carbohydrate in Vegemite. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so the main takeaway here is that many of our protein sources, if we want just pure protein sources, we're looking at these animal products with some elements of fat in them. Next, we can look at some plant-based uh, servings of protein. So again, this is about 100 grams worth. And the highest here, we've got this veggie delights, veggie sausages, 200 calories uh, per 100 grams. Um, higher protein, 19 grams, 10.4, 10.6. And if we were to compare uh, this veggie delight, highest plant-based protein with, let's say, lamb, you know, it barely touches the 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 protein intake per 100 gram, which is why it can be quite challenging for those who are following plant-based programs to get a good source of just actual protein without lots of other servings of macronutrients. So we can see here that we're getting higher fat intakes and higher carb intakes simply because they're plant-based proteins. They're going to have carbohydrate from the plants. We've got our friends like tofu, tofu, um, edamame, tempeh, uh, higher, higher in protein, um, but you know, not as high as in animal products. Then we can look at um, fruits and vegetables that make the list. So of course, on the top, we've got things like our legumes. And again, you know, if we look at, let's say this red kidney beans, 12.8 um, grams of protein per 100 grams. Uh, and that, you know, kind of sits us maybe in this lower level here, if anything higher than some tofu. Okay. So it can be helpful, but there are some other better plant-based sources of protein. High in carbohydrate, higher in fiber. Um, and if we go down the list, we've got things like chickpeas, peas, broccoli, kale, potatoes, rocket, okra, um, passion fruit. <laughs> so some amounts of protein per 100 grams of fruits and vegetables. Next, we can look at some of our um, max and maxine supplements. So of course, the highest absolute mass really large in calories, mainly because of our high carbohydrate, high fat contents. Um, as we go down, lots of Max's products are um, really high in protein, mainly because of their uh, serving size, a little bit larger. And then we've got some Maxine products here, a little bit smaller serving size, um, similar protein-ish intakes. But the main takeaway is that our protein um, supplements generally lower in fats, generally lower in carbohydrate than other um, protein sources. Again, if you look at something like the uh, calories, you know, let's say a serving is a super shred, about 100 calories, we're getting that 20 grams of protein. Next, let's talk about fats. So if we were to 
um, organize the list, list to the highest fats. We've got at the very top, you know, our oils, our olive oil, almond oil, canola oil, linseed oil, oil, essentially 99% fat. Um, and then with with 100 mils of oil being at nine calories per gram, which is really high, you know, 90 fats per serve of 100 grams, okay? Really high in calories as well, because most of us, you know, if you had 200 grams of oil, there's your whole daily calorie intake, which is why when we look at um, salad dressings and um, sauces and such, uh, these things taste really nice, uh, which is like fats taste really nice, um, but, you know, really add up in our overall calories. Next, we could look at our fats per 100 grams minus um, nuts and oils. So here we can start to see some more dairy products making the list. We've got butter, some more seeds, some dressing, and some cheeses here. Um, high in fats, some elements of carbohydrate and fiber, some elements of protein here, really high in calories. Then we can look at our fats per 100 gram, which is um, minus nuts, oils, and dairy. And at the very top, we've got our things like our pesto, we've got Thousand Island, Island dressing, we've got our plant-based um, cheeses here, we've got our, our good friend hummus, um, and then some other plant-based proteins. So the main takeaway is still high in fats, still have some protein, some carbohydrate. Next, we can look at carbohydrates, looking at total carbohydrates of this list here. At the very top, we've got our cornflakes, lovely, nice and high in carbohydrate, um, rice cake, cakes, cranberry, couscous, um, noodles, these types of things. Um, and then mostly what we find with high in carbohydrate, you know, moderate-ish um, fiber. So we've got like, you know, 3.8 grams of fiber, which isn't too high when we compare some other fiber sources. Let's say like this barley here, um, but per 100 gram, it's still okay for fiber. Next, we can look at our fruits and vegetables for carbohydrate. Really up high is our things like our bananas, some legumes, potatoes, carbohydrates. Um, so the good thing here is that we've got just straight up carbohydrate, very little fat, very little protein. So if we're looking for just a straight up carbohydrate source, you know, we're not looking at other influencing macronutrients, relatively low in calories, um, and then, you know, okay with fiber. Talking about fiber, remember that fiber is the part of the plant uh, part of the food that your body body can't uh, digest, okay? So all of our carbohydrates have some elements of um, fiber in it that we can't digest. Uh, we want to aim for about 25 grams per day. We want to be maxing out about 20 grams of fiber per meal um, and then maxing out about 50 grams of fiber per day. If, we, if we're having this higher level of fiber, that can lead to some gastric distress, some issues with uh, bloating and nausea and such. So we don't want to be having too much fiber, but we want to be aiming for about this 25 grams of fiber per day. Now, to calculate when we're talking about fiber and carbs, the so fiber is classified under the umbrella of a carbohydrate as a total carbohydrate. Total carbs minus fiber equals our net carbohydrate. So there are some who would say that we're mainly concerned with our net carbohydrate because we can't absorb all of our total carbohydrate because there's fiber elements in it. So some would say that we only need to look at our net carbohydrate. However, that, that conversation gets a little bit tricky because individuals will uh, digest different elements of fiber differently to each other. So, you know, I might be able to digest, you know, four grams of fiber, you might be able to digest seven grams of fiber. So that could be enough to change our overall like, caloric intake if we're trying to look at our net carbohydrates and we don't really know exactly what we're being absorbed at that time. So for your caloric intake, it's better just to count the total carbohydrate, something that's a little bit more uniform um, because we're just unsure of how much we're actually absorbing when it comes to fiber. Quickly talking about fiber digestion and the glycemic index, fiber can slow down digestion um, and slower rates of digestion can cause increased satiety. So what that means is if you're having a, fi a higher fiber intake, that means that you may be feeling fuller for longer. Um, however, it can be inefficient when you're looking at performance. So for performance elements, we want to be having kind of a low fiber food so that our the, the carbohydrate can be broken down into glucose, enter our bloodstream, and we can use it for energy. And this is where we get things like the glycemic index. Not a massive part in <clears throat> our body composition, doesn't really matter, but it can play a role in our satiety levels and also play a role in our performance levels, which is why you may see um, 
you know, sports athletes looking at things like, you know, watermelon, pineapple, looking at things like white bread, looking at things like lollies, candies, and sweets because they're really high on the GI index, glycemic index, because it gets broken down instantly, fueling their training sessions. Um, however, when we look at foods that are lower in GI, these are foods that you may um, associate with like bodybuilding diets. Look at broccoli, asparagus. Um, you know, we've got things like our wild rice, sweet potatoes, you know, low uh, GI foods to help us feel fuller for longer. Talking about fiber per gram, um, if we're looking at this column here, we've got things like our chia seeds, often marketed as high fiber foods. And then of course, you know, a high fiber breakfast cereal, really high in fiber. And if we're looking at that kind of equation where we look at the total carbohydrates, fiber, you know, we're looking at maybe eight net um, carbs per um, serve per 100 grams of cheese seeds. So if we take this number minus this number, we're looking at about eight, um, still high in calories because of high fat content. Similar with this uh, Kellogg's All Brand, you know, we're looking at maybe like 33 net carbohydrates. But again, tricky to actually say for certain that this is 28 grams that you did not um, digest and absorb because each person will be individual. Let's look at the fiber per 100 grams for grains. So, of course, we've got our all branded very top. We've got rye, we've got quinoa, we've got whole meal pasta, and then um, that's, that's measured dry. And we've got, you know, wild rice and then whole meal pasta boiled from dry. So, um, whole meal pasta is on twice. So, we know that um, whole meal um, breads and pastas and rice, so that brown rice and such, will be higher in fiber than um, white versions. Both will be completely equal for body composition. You could choose whatever you want for body composition. However, you could manipulate the choice of those foods depending on things like sports performance or depending on things like um, satiety levels. So if you're choosing to have more wholemeal pasta, you may be feeling fuller for longer. Um, so then you, um, you know, aren't wanting to snack and binge eat throughout the day. Then we've got our fruits and vegetables here. Really high is our passion fruit. We've got our legumes. Um, we've got things like chickpeas, uh, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, really high in fiber, um, you know, moderate-ish carbohydrate, low in fats, and then, um, you know, somewhat protein in there as well. Quickly talking about vitamins and minerals, our body needs a range of vitamins and minerals from different fruit, food sources, and we do need them at different points throughout the day. Um, we don't really store vitamins and minerals in our body. Our, it enters our bloodstream, we get to use it, and then we end up kind of peeing it out. So we do need this kind of constant flow of vitamins and minerals, um, which is why we love having lots of fruits and vegetables in diets in general. Some restricted diets can be deficient in vitamins and minerals. So if you're following like a, let's say a keto diet, which will be low in carbohydrates, so you're eating very small amounts of fruits and vegetables, um, you can be low and deficient in vitamins and minerals, okay? So to negate potential vitamin mineral deficiencies, strategy one is to eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, preferably seasonal fruits and vegetables, and of a variety of colors. So there's these sayings such as, eat the rainbow, having lots of different colors, and the color colors generally represent different like phytochemicals, which is really great for our body. So, you know, choose things like red, food, red uh, fruits and vegetables, green fruits and vegetables, look for the orange, the yellow, the purple. So look for different colors of fruits and vegetables to make sure that you're having a range of different vitamins and minerals. Consider a multivitamin. Uh, that would be at best, you know, like a weak positive, meaning that if you have one, it might be small amount helpful. At worst, it will do nothing but give you really expensive pee. So consider a multivitamin just to kind of cover all bases that make sure that we're not really lacking in um, a certain area in our vitamins and minerals. But of course, that question comes up of, okay, is the dose high enough to be effective? Uh, and if we need vitamins and minerals throughout the whole day, if we have a multivitamin in the morning, does that mean that in the evening we're having adequate vitamins and minerals? So it can't replace a diet completely, just like all of our supplements, um, but you can consider a multivitamin. Next, we need to talk about sodium. Sodium, um, meaning salt, is probably the, the only rock that we need to eat, um, and it's essential for water balance and nervous system and muscle system function. So we need salt for our nerve, nervous system to, to, to fire, to move, and then also for our muscles to contract. So we can't completely negate sodium. And often when we start a dieting process, one of the first things to go, because we know we shouldn't be having salt, um, we get rid of salt and then we face problems. So if we, we want about a minimum of 500 milligrams of salt per day. Um, and if we 
have too little sodium or too little salt, we can have symptoms of fatigue, um, dizziness, muscle cramps, these types of things. And often when we are dieting, a similar symptom is things like fatigue. And, and often a response to fatigue is to eat food. So maybe you're feeling fatigued and you're starting this binge eating session simply because you're low in sodium. The max kind of intake is around this 2,000 milligrams per day. Um, and if we're having more than that, it, we have symptoms of, you know, this high blood pressure, infrequent urination, and excessive thirst. So we don't want to be having more than 2,000 milligrams per day um, just to be healthy and safe. Some practical applications is we do want some variation in our diet. Um, eating the exact same thing over and over and over again can cause some nutritional deficiencies. So we do want a range of different sources of proteins, um, different sources of vegetables, different sources of energy, different sources of carbs and fats. Um, choosing low fiber options around training time. So we want to digest that food really quickly so it enters the bloodstream. And then we're gonna be consuming a range of different fruits and vegetables of different colors so we can get different vitamins and minerals. Talking about salt, salt your meats, but don't add salt to your meals so that you can get some element of salt for your day. So you're hitting that minimum threshold, but not taking it overboard where we're in that higher end of the threshold. Well, that concludes our food composition, and I will catch you next time for adjusting your diet.